Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Lithium America's stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Lithium Americas has two lithium mining projects, one in Argentina and one in Nevada. The company is headquartered in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada and was founded in 2007. It went public in 2008 and trades on the New York Stock Exchange, TSX, and Deutsche Börse. So far, the company has not started production on either mine at this point, although they do indicate by next year they'll start production on both mines. Regarding the Argentina project, the company's estimating their total expenses to be $641 million and their annual EBITDA to be $308 million and they say the life of the project is 40 years. And the company owns 44% of the mine, so a little less than half of the cost and revenue will go to LAC. It is expecting to start production in the third quarter of next year. This project has been in development since 2009, so they've definitely put a lot of work into getting this set up. This is a picture of an evaporation pond from their website. LAC uses pumps to extract brine to the top of the water. They line the top of the water with a polymer-based material to remove the water so they can scoop up the brine. The lining on top of the water will have brine and water sitting on top of it. And then it takes sometimes up to two years for the water to evaporate so they're able to transport the minerals to pull out the lithium, boron, and other salts. And if it rains, this can delay the process. Usually rain is pretty limited where this lithium process is used. But it's a really interesting process that they came up with. And the company says 300,000 tons of lithium are proven to be in this mine and 1.7 million are probable. So that means there's a potential for nearly 2 million tons of lithium at this location. Regarding the Nevada project, its initial cost will be $1 billion, then 581 million in phase one. The project's NPV is $3.9 billion, and the life of the project is about 46 years. And the company owns 100% of this mine, so if it's successful, they get all the benefit. The EBITDA initially is $520 million per year, and then $246 million for Phase 1. This mine was initially discovered in 1975. LAC started exploration in 2007, so they put a lot of time into this. All major permits are expected to be completed by the end of this year, so it does appear production will start sometime next year. 2.4 million tons of lithium are proven to be in this mine, and 800,000 tons are probable. So that means nearly 3.1 million tons is the potential for this location. The way lithium will be extracted at this mine is from clay stone, and they're using a complex process to break the stone down and pull out the lithium mineral. The company claims its process is much more environmentally friendly than that of other lithium miners. Lithium is extremely important since it powers laptops, phones, it's used in medications, and it's more needed than ever since lithium is in EVs. All the big car companies say they will transition from fossil fuel cars to EV cars. Over the life of a fossil fuel car, it wastes so much more raw material and is so much worse for the environment than an EV car. It's not even close. Even if the extraction of lithium proves to be bad for the environment, the life of an EV car compared to a regular car may make up the difference and still put pressure on the demand for more lithium. The Biden administration wants to see lithium mined in a responsible way that respects the environment. The government sees lithium as a big source of job creation in Nevada because Nevada is home to the only large-scale lithium mine currently operating in the U.S. There are two lithium mines in Nevada facing legal challenges and pushback from conservationists. This creates an opportunity for LAC if its mining process is as clean as they say it is. Let's get started with the model. This is a small cap company, 1.7 billion market cap. They're trading at $14 a share and they have 120 million shares outstanding. 
Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So of course they have negative free cash flow each year because they're pre-revenue. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that is positive in 2019, negative in every other year. Revenue is a sales for the company. They did have a little revenue in 2018, but zero after that. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue, the sales, and then you have operating income, which of course is negative every year because they're pre-revenue. They paid six million of interest on their debt in the trailing 12 months. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income. And the only reason they had positive net income is because they sold an asset and gained $76 million, but it's negative every other year. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company loses from its operational business. And then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. And they had 62 million in CapEx in 2020, 30 million in 2019. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow, which of course is negative every year. So they need money from somewhere to fund their operations. They took out 18 million of debt in 2018, 66 million, then 37 million. Most of their financing comes from issuing capital stock. They issued 500 million of capital stock in a trailing 12 months. When a company issues capital stock, it dilutes the current shareholders. It makes your shares less valuable. You don't want to see the company go bankrupt and you lose your entire investment. They need money from somewhere to move forward the process to eventually extract lithium. Let's look at the capital structure. 562 million of equity, 136 million of debt. They're 80% equity, 20% debt. Their net debt is negative since they have a lot of cash on their balance sheet. They could pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have 378 million of cash left over. Their weighted average cost of capital, which is a blend of the cost of equity and cost of debt is 12.3%. And that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 3.1 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $2.4 billion. We divide that by 120 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $20. They're trading at $14, so they're trading at a 28% discount. It's a buy according to the model. So since the company provided their EBITDA, and if you look over a long period of time, EBITDA should be pretty close to free cash flow. But if you look at the numbers on an individual year, they could vary a lot. But over a really long term, they should be pretty similar. The EBITDA estimate for the Argentina project is 300 million, and they own about half that mine, so that's 150 million. They mentioned two EBITDAs for the Nevada mine. The lower one was 250 million. So 250 million plus 150 million is 400 million. I took a haircut off that number and lowered it to 300 million for 2024. Because I've noticed a lot of companies get pretty loose with their estimations. They usually go pretty high to get a lot of investor interest. So that's why I lowered the numbers. And I gave them a pretty high whack, a pretty high discount rate. And my stock price estimate is still above what they're trading at. So that is pretty good. Two analysts priced this stock and their price target was $25. This is the stock price since it started trading. And it was $2 a share back in March 2020. And then the price was really driven up, well past $20 a share. And during that entire time, the company didn't make any money. The only thing that changed with the company is they got closer to getting to the point where they could start extracting lithium. But they didn't actually make any money, but they didn't extract anything at this point. The stock was driven up so much because of the EV craze. Any company connected to lithium or the EV industry went up a lot. You can see it came back down as most stocks do. And back in 2011, 12, and 13, the stock price was below $1 a share. This is where the stock has been trading in the past 12 months. So you can see the stock more than doubled from 12 months ago. The low point in the past 12 months was $4 and the peak was $29. The stock has been cut in half since its peak though. 
And this stock isn't too volatile. Its beta is a little higher than one. So it's a little more volatile than the market. The stock has gone up 200% in the past 52 weeks. So it's tripled in price. While the S&P 500 went up 40% in the same time frame. The 52 week low was 430, the high was 29. And the stock is trading above its 50 day, but below its 200 day moving average. When the 200 day moving average crosses above the 50 day moving average, which this did, that's called the death cross. That's a bearish signal. So the stock is on a decline. About two and a half million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 120 million shares outstanding, 92 million are on float, 22% are held by institutions, and almost 9% of the shares are shorted. This stock has done really well in the past year, three years, and five years, up a lot more than its industry and the market. And analysts are pretty bullish on this stock. They're expecting their earnings to grow 100% while its industry declines 3%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, that's when the stock was at its lowest, 64 cents a share. And if you continue holding on, you'd be at over $200,000 today. That's an amazing return. But if you put $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, but most people wouldn't wait six years to see the value of their investment increase. A lot of people would have sold off earlier because every day they look at it, it's either flat or it's gone down. But of course, nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody could have predicted this. The company Ganfang Lithium, the ticker is GFL. They have a market cap of $10 billion. It's a Chinese company and it's one of the largest miners of lithium in the world. They own 12.5% of the stock, 15 million shares. So that should give you some comfort in this company if a large lithium miner is willing to invest so much money into this company. Two board members, George Ireland and Franco Mignaco, own some stock as well. Invesco owns 2.4% and Van Eck 1.5%. Let's look at their financial ratios. We can't look at the PE or price to sales since they're pre-revenue. Their price to book is pretty good at 3.1. The only reason they have a good price to book is because they did that recent capital raise and have over half a billion of cash on their balance sheet. They have negative return on invested capital and they have a lot of current assets on their balance sheet. They have over $500 million of cash. So it looks like the company's well-funded. They should have enough money to get through the next 12 months without doing another capital raise or needing more debt. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos of eight companies in the same industry as LAC. And if LAC has a number in red, they're worse than the average. If they have a number in blue, they're better than the average. So we can't look at their PE or price to sales. They are better than average in price to book. They have a really high current ratio. They're lower in debt than the average company, and they're 1.7 billion market cap, which is a lot lower than average, but it's a really high market cap for a company that had no revenue the past 12 months. So to summarize, I do have them trading at a 28% discount. The demand for lithium is the least of this company's problems. What they have to deal with is governmental intervention, competitors, they still need to start the mining process. A lot of their numbers are estimates, their expenses could be a lot higher, or they may not be able to mine as much lithium as they thought they could. But if the company is successful with at least half of what they said, I think this is a good stock to buy, especially if you want to get exposure to lithium. I ranked their free cash flows, revenue, and ratios 1 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.